the looking glass with the owner of Cinegraphia Summons. Welcome to the stage to fascinating and enigmatic Mr. Sumant Jai Krishna. <laughs> Today all microphones. <laughs> it's not of him. Can I take this off? This is not working. How are you? Nice to meet you, Marve. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank IMWF for inviting me to speak over here. I'm using the uh, I'm using the phrase through the looking glass because it's one of my favorite authors and books, uh, Lewis Carroll, Alice in Wonderland. Uh, and that's, this is the sequel to that. It really means going through the rabbit hole. And in a sense, going into another world is what we all do. So when I talk about through the looking glass, I'm talking about looking through the eyes of the client and the beholder, so being on the other side of the mirror. I'm talking about eliciting an imaginative response. And more importantly, as you know, uh, Nilab has said and other people have said, how do you leave an emotional memory behind? So critically, uh, it means you have to transform the space. You know? And I'm going to start with the very ABC of it, which is transformative installations where in a space like this, you can recognize a geometry. It's rectangular, there's a central uh, geometry, or it's along the side, uh, or it can be a round space, and it's uh, you know, radial, it depends. So I'm starting with one of the first projects where there was a fan structure, for example. It's hung in a space which is long like this. It goes up and down. So you see performers underneath it. It goes up, and so stretches the space and stretches the entry, and turns around with movement and wind or heat. And as you can see, I've used the same structures in a music festival. And when that happens, uh, with the number of people that increases, the heat of the space makes them turn rounder and faster. So in essence, what I'm talking about is that across any space, whether it's a wedding, whether it's uh, a fashion event, whether it's a music festival, the rules are the same. And that we've talked about earlier in the day as well. For example, here, the tree is the structure. The tree is, it's a beautiful tree. It's just wrapped in flowers. We've added the flowers, we've added the uh, candles, and it becomes, it transforms into something else. Uh, over here, the tree didn't exist, so I've created the trees, but it's, it's, it's a kind of a space of trees which are sculptural with very fine thread work on it to give it a lightness. And that's something I'm going to be talking about constantly lightness, the lightness of being, and the fact that when we do a project, which is just for one evening sometimes, how do you deal with it to keep costs in control? How do you deal with it to still keep it beautiful? How do you deal with it to keep it feeling light, ephemeral? Because it is ephemeral, it only stays on as a memory, or in your, uh, as a film sometimes, but it can never capture the moment and your actual experience in sight. Uh, this is another image of the same project where you can see how I've taken the chakra as an element and used it on the uh, uh, building as well. 
Uh, this is an interior space. Very often we have low spaces, we have high spaces. How do you utilize both so that your eye goes up and down? And this is for an exhibition with textile, but for an art show. And then when you go inside the tunnel, how do you create the sense of infinity? Because you're always trying to achieve something which is larger and bigger, both in the reality and in your mind, what you keep ahead in your mind after it's all over. Over here, this is a project for the French Embassy where instead of red, white, blue, the flag, I've gone from through the color spectrum. And that's something as an Indian, one has the freedom to do. One can be complex or one can be simple, yet the ability to work with color is the most important because color evokes so many emotions. These also have lights in it, so when it becomes dark, the lights come on and it lights up. This was for a music festival. So when you talk about images and color, and this had no structure, no geometry. So I had to create the structure and geometry to give a rhythm to the space. And I use these in the weddings I do. So do not separate the images I'm showing you from the other projects, because it is pretty much one and the same thing. This was in Austria. I had to create structures, and these are giant hands. I've used these hands for mehendis separately, full of mehendi. Uh, these are lotuses. I've used it in an art installation. I also use them in weddings because lotuses in India are so uh, They're precious and they're very symbolic of peace of love of uh, Many such emotions over here. There was an existing sculpture. I added the lotuses to enhance the space The elephant is another motif. This is entirely mirrored. It's covered in stones and uh, this friend of mine had with her purple hair very elegant dress I asked her to model for this, just to get a sense of how you can go into another space. This, the, this is a structure where I was working on a wedding in Kenya. And off the street, I found these artists who normally make uh, elephants and rhinos and things like that. And I asked them if they could make me a 14-foot high structure of a lady's face. Uh, and this is what came up, and I was very pleased with it. This is for the art fair. These are structures that are like the game that you play. It would be set in the morning and be chaotic in the evening because the kids especially loved it. This is another thing where I talk about lightness because you can see I use a lot of thread filament. And this is just done in filament of about 40 shades for an art fair. But I use it in all the events. So what I'm expo introducing you to are the bits of vocabulary which change constantly. This is a structure made of glass with etching film. So when you light it, the etching picks it up. And I was meant to create something classical, yet contemporary for a fashion designer for his bridal exposition. So you can see all the structures. So one entire side was mirror, and the other three were glass. Uh, this is for Swarovski, and I work on them, work with them for fashion, for weddings, for installations, for trend forums. And this, instead of Christ a Christmas tree, I created something inspired by flame for Diwali, because that's when people shop in India, not during Christmas. And again, as you can see, the lotus has a base over here. This was the India Pavilion for the India Design for uh, the uh, London Design Biennale in London two years ago, where I worked with the street. And it was Utopia in Design, and I'm working with uh, street art or street text in embroidery hoops. And I've used the chakras again, because we talk about evolution from one chakra to the next, to the next, to the next, until you find the ultimate evolution. It had a stainless steel flow, so as a person in the space, you were suspended in space. So I'll move now into the ceremonial spaces, which can be small or large, and simple or complex. I'll start with large spaces, for example. Over here, you can see that this is a space for a lot of people, but yet it had to be serene. So working with flowers, the basics of the of the uh, banana tree, which is meant to be quite uh, auspicious, the pundits or the priests in the center, and everyone else in a tiered amphitheater space. These are other kind of amphitheater spaces, but this is inspired, for example, from the temples in Kerala where I come from, where the priests will light up the temple in 15 minutes. Here I worked with ribbon or the thread work again, and you can see how it works in different ways uh, with the amphitheater again. Banana stems, tender coconut leaves, uh, bulbs inside it. So it's finding different craftsmen who do traditional work and then involving it intuitively into what one does. 
this is a more recent vocabulary where I work with taking actual architectural forms, but translating it into something ephemeral with filigree work, and ribbon work, and floral work, so that, and glass. You know, because we, have, as being in India, you have access to all of this at very low cost. So very often, even when I'm doing projects abroad, as uh, Ritharaj will tell you, because he does a lot of this, we make these in India and ship it because it makes it possible for us to afford to do something with scale. Otherwise, very often, in uh, Europe especially, it, the costs of creating are so prohibitive that you cannot actually make these things there. Water bodies, this is very recent. This is the last project about three weeks ago, where we created that entirely and had the uh, ceremony in the middle of it. You know, and this entire space was air conditioned. So that's the crazy part of it. The events I'm showing you range from, say, uh, 300 people to 10,000 people. I'm not going to tell you which is which, because these are more, this is more about ideas. But you know, that's the scale of uh, range of people that we have. This was in Florence. In fact, uh, Costanza is here, and we worked with her on this. We had to work with things which were available locally and create something which didn't interfere with the beauty of the Tuscan villa. This was in a house in India. So these are the simpler ones. Where just working with Indian flowers and finding different ways to do the colors, you can actually do something. Here it was a wall which was a very ugly tin wall. So using ikat, the Indian textile, as an inspiration, trying to get something organic yet structured. This was for this I actually worked after having worked in Italy on a project in Venice. You'll see photos. I pulled in Eric Chauvin, who was a uh, floral designer from Paris, for a wedding where in the main space, the five spaces for the Mehendi or the henna ceremony were just rooms of different colored flowers. You know, so there were five rooms, five shades of flowers, and sometimes it can be very minimal. Uh, and I think that's what's fun about being Indian, that you can go from one extreme of simplicity to the other extreme of complexity and layering, kitsch and chaos. One of the important learning places for me in projects was in fashion, you know, because fashion in India, the ultimate, usually, fashion designers are not couture designers, they design for weddings. So along the way, whether it's kaleidoscopes, whether it's moving geodesic domes, whether it's uh, uh, mirror sculptures, whether it's forests made of PVC pipes, whether it's forests made of paper cut, where the lights come on and the forest reveals itself later, whether it's lotuses which are self-lit floating on ramps made of water, or an entire ramp and set made of just lotuses, for example, a lotus forest. This is for a well-known fashion designer called Rohit Bal. I've been designing lotus sets for him for 20 years now. Uh, or things that are more operatic, more classical. And then for the same designer, I then did a twisted framed entry. You can see what that looks like. Uh, this is another one where if you look at the structures at the back, the self-lit forms are actually cycle wheels and bislery bottles painted gold with bulbs inside them. Use the same thing here, reflected in a water body. So sometimes very simple things which are cost effective can be very dramatic because it is only for that one time. This was a set made of junk from uh, automobile junkyards because they were launching a, 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 it was a couture show believe it or not but in a for launching Mitsubishi this was a designer who said I want hot Shepsut's tomb as my inspiration from Egypt I said sure that's fine but may I make it not solid and uh, you know imitate it but use paper instead so it became self-lit this is, again, a forest in a much lower space than this. And for, again, a bridal show. So in the process, what I learned with my theater, I haven't shown you performance images, is that I am the artist and my client or collaborator, who could be any one of you, and you'll see some of the collaborations, you are the muse. So I have to be your channel. And that's very important. And what is different about pro projects in India is that like the simplicity to the complexity, I have to find out who they are. And I do it through a process called These Are A Few Of My Favorite Things, which helps me define what the qualities of the space are, whether it's sacred, meditative, whether it's celebratory, whether it's sensual, uh, whether it's with lotuses. This is for a guru, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. And he was giving a talk in a house, so I worked with the lotus, or the thousand-petal lotus. 
because it was in the vocabulary of his philosophy and it was just a house. Uh, this was in Dubai. We had taken over an island. It was for a henna ceremony. So then where do you add things so that then the island becomes, you just add just enough. You know, and the same thing we, uh, just now I think Nilab was talking about uh, Babel Shams. This is at Babel Shams in that same amphitheater. But I got a friend who does music festivals in South Africa and around the world to do the central structure, which is tensile. Uh, someone wanted a Moulin Rouge theme party, so it's bulbs and the elephant, a 60th birthday party where he loved jazz, so overnight we transformed it into a jazz bar. Uh, this is a gothic themed party, a youngster's party, which had a lot of video mapping. There are some projects I'm not allowed to show because I have to sign NDAs with certain clients. Because recently we did a project where we worked with a team from Paris and it was probably the best video mapping ever. You know, it, it, it makes you happy and uh, when something comes out that well. But through it all, what's critical is that I need to like it. The favorite things list is something where I sit with the clients for hours and find out what they eat, what they read, what films they watch, what's beauty, uh, what's faith, religion, what centers them, what's fashion. And then, then I start intuiting on their behalf. It's a very important process. I won't detail it further than that. But, and that helps me find a new vocabulary. But what's critical, critical is, even with a new vocabulary, I need to like it. My team needs to like it. Because if you're not convinced, no one else is going to be convinced. So, and I believe in magic. Because we are in the, we are in the process of something where we are expected to be the magicians, we are expected to create the magic, expect, expected to create the memories. So alchemy is, by definition, uh, the philosophy which talks about a person in, an, in the Middle Ages who would transform a base metal like lead into gold, or would try to. And what we try to do in the, in the world of events and weddings is to find the metaphorical gold. What is the correct thing for that project? And and that's, that's a gift, actually, for all of us, and the fact that we have the ability, the possibility to do that. Whether it's someone's 21st birthday where I'm working with light and video mapping and uh, entrances and optical illusion, or whether it's uh, the Lady Gaga show for Formula One, or whether it's a client. These are seven-story structures who want something inspired by Southeast Asia. So those are all turning uh, prayer wheels, four stories high, you enter in, go left or right. And you can look out through the moving prayer wheels. Southeast of Asia, of Asia is easy because you have from samurai warriors to calligraphy to Zen gardens. And there are different kinds of spaces. This was a high tea area. The, a similar space like this on the other side had the fruit area because different communities have different rituals. And that's exciting just to figure out how to shift that, you know, it has to be done differently. I mean, I think the one thing I'm always told, and I try not to roll my eyes and look enthusiastic, is it must be different. It must never have been done before, uh, which is sometimes tough. So these are all different food spaces for the same event. This, as I said, are the hands for the henna ceremony in Venice, where we had to take over an island. This was a wedding in Venice because it was about 800 people and we had to create different spaces. So I was working off the vocabulary of Venice. Why would I go to Venice and try and create a mini India there? So from elements of the chapel there, to uh, the statues, to the topiaries, to even the structures we built, the metaphor, and we're always looking for metaphors and ideas, was that of a palazzo. So you can see the ceilings, you can see the inspiration of the images, you can see the flowers. It's, you're working with a different vocabulary. My history, you must remember, for 10, 12 years before I came into events and fashion, I used to design stage costume lighting for theater, dance, and opera, and also I used to do production design for film. So research and finding what works is very important. So here you can see the palazzo ceilings, you can see the flowers, and at the sides, you have images behind the art structures of Venice in the Middle Ages to the you know, stage where we worked with the mound at the back and the opera house, La Fenice. Uh, and then it transforms into the night. Very often you have to work with something that starts at four in the afternoon. You've tested your light so that the transformation from day to dusk to night has to be seamless. So what is very cool, and it's something that I don't think a lot of people from I mean, you know about it, but which, because we work with it, is the fact that we have a lot of 
craft available to us. It can be basic, the carpenters, the painters, the tailors, or it can be people from places like Firozabad and Murabad, Muradabad, where they do fine brass work, glass work, uh, textiles that you get woven sometimes specifically. Uh, and there you have the skills, abilities, and also, of course, the experience, because the rhythm of work is different there. And the antenna, which I talk about, which is to listen to your collaborator or your client, that listen, the word listen is very important, because it means you have to read between the lines, to follow your intuition once you've understood who they are, because very often they say what they feel they ought to say, not what they really mean, and then research intelligently. I mean, this is the elephant again, but there are other sculptures like this for one of my clients who loved horses, who loves horses. He actually participates professionally. And you can see how I've used, brought it in in different ways. These are sculptures of metal and of uh, leather. This is another client who was into high tech, so I've got infinity mirrors, video mapping with uh, the darkroom team from London. Uh, this is another wedding where I worked with the lotus, but in three-dimensional forms, of course, peacocks. So there are certain elements that you have to reinvent in different moments. This was a food area which was for uh, Central Asian food versus the dessert area which is made of paper flowers from, with a floral friend from Bangkok who supplied them. This is the continental food area. In another event, I just worked with frames and you can see all the thread work again with antique lamps below it. And you can see how people said, all of these are in structures that we build if it's winter, we don't air conditioned. If it's summer, we have to air conditioned. And they're very large spaces starting from, uh, you know, it could be 4,000 square meters to almost 20,000 square meters when you're doing something like uh, 10,000 people. Uh, this was another event where we had Yani coming in. So then we worked with scale. We had to create something operatic. So you can see the high walls of flowers, the arches on the ceiling. It was inspired by a cathedral, but not. Uh, made of those structures, just ribbon, uh, very high chandeliers, versus this is a client who loved things, all things contemporary, clean, new. So the entrance was just flowers and mirror and shapes. Moved to the main space, we built over a house, which is just made of glass and metal. The only floral detail was at the end. I was very proud we had louvers at the sides to allow the green of the garden to show. Uh, this is another collaboration where I work with a Belgian florist, and he comes in to work on specific projects, and I love that. Uh, but at the back, for example, this is something we did on our own. It's all Indian flowers wrapped, wrapped on pipes, and then comes down like a DNA structure into the water body in the corner of the lawn or the, of the garden. Um, and then in the center, you have these sculptures that he created specifically. So you ident identify and say, look, this area needs something which is inspirational like this. Uh, there was a fountain, which didn't work, so we created a floral fountain, which is just made of fine yarn and uh, flowers. Uh, this is another octagonal space where there were eight spaces around and one central space. So this is one of the eight spaces you enter through, uh, and this is one of the other eight spaces. So all of them are very different. This is a, yet another of the spaces, which was a bar space with the roof on top. This was one more, which was the teponyaki space. You can see the kimono at the back and the bamboo roof, but the kimonos are actually fabric merging into flowers, again, working with another floral designer to get an idea going. Yet another space, Costanza, inspired by Tuscany. Uh, and in the center, this is the flowers you see from underneath, because it was very high, it was 20 meters high, we built a giant pyramid with the Sri Yantra, which is, a, which is something fairly ritualistic and auspicious. But the structure is like a pyramid, inspired by something from Mexico, because it's something that the clients loved. So it's also you pick different ideas and put it together and see how that works. One of the other spaces, this is for the dining area. And you can see how the dining area, which is divided into two, works with these trees and sculptures. And then in the outer space, how you had angled mirrors, so you can see yourself and the trees. So how do you get interactive? This was something which was very 1920s, so inspired by that period of time where you enter onto the first level, which is like a library inside with the giant Fabergé egg, walk down into this giant space, which is, uh, you know, it's got mirror, glass. Uh, it's very uh, art deco. It's one of my favorite period, periods of time. Versus something very classical. This is all inspired by the Lotus for a wedding. 
again a huge space, giant inverted floral lotuses, uh, stage again with one giant lotus. And what you have here are all the gods and goddesses because they were very religious. They wanted a pantheon of the gods like stained glass, but flowing and merging into flowers. So what becomes important in this process are the craftsmen, the performers, the technologies, but more, most importantly, most importantly across all, across the entire board are the people. You know, so over here, someone who collected art, working with structures, sculptures, working with street artists to create the backdrop over there, uh, working with a light artist to bring this space in into the entry area, which is just, it felt like very much like a loft. Uh, you can see what it looks like. Uh, the entrance, which is all very fluorescent. Versus inside a hotel, this is a recent project again, where it was zigzag of mirrors. So as you walk, it's a kaleidoscope. You see yourself coming and going, and the floral artist worked with details over here. This is again inside a room like this. I just took over the ceiling because in, we'd have, we had about 24 hours to set this up. And this was another one of the rooms. Working in hotels is the hardest because you're limited by space and time. But over here, creating everything, taking over for everything from the floor to the walls to the textile. This was another space. We even took over the ceiling and worked out how to do it, where you can see it was just the black and white and the green, you know, so it's another vocabulary. I think what I'm very blessed by is that when you use your client as a muse, you stretch your world. Sorry, I zipped. OK, no, this is fine. You stretch your world, because they introduce an, their world to you, which is a new world. Again, over here, this is inspired by my soap palace, but keeping lightness in mind, it's just done in ribbon. It's not made of solid structure. And in fact, those are inverted flower roofs, domes at the back. I had about 100 odd sculptures made at the entrance to greet the clients. This was the dining space inspired by a Mughal tent. But you, know, with, you just saw the backlit ceiling. Uh, this is one of the other spaces where inspired by the mesh structures we've been do doing, seeing recently. But Indian style. How do you work with it? How do you incorporate it with all the layering, you know, uh, with the floral structures, with the wall details behind, uh, with the bar, with, you know, the, an Indian wedding wants everything, you know, the layering into the other space where the ceremony happens, uh, the central ceiling, different ways of doing the flowers, um, so different spaces over here, and then of course, the detail of the stage, everything from the flooring to the walls of flowers at the back to the stained glass uh, to the kind of sundial, which I love. So like I said, making dreams come true. And someone said this morning, inverted in, in, is inserted in, we are only as big as our dreams. And as a designer, as someone else, you're expected to make the dreams bigger and bigger and bigger and better. And the last thing that I believe in, that God is in the detail. And that's what I think we must not forget. Because as the world becomes more sophisticated, the requirement for detail is becoming larger and larger. So you can get away with less fuzz and fluff. And that's something to be keep in mind. Thank you. <laughs>